Open with me your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 14. Many times God wants us to take steps of faith, trusting and believing in him. But fear of what will happen if I do that step of faith, fear of failure, fear of the resources that we lack often stops us from taking giant steps for the Lord in faith. I want to tell you that if God has put something in your heart, we don't look at our resources, we look at God and we take those steps in faith and God will honor those steps and his work will be done through that. Can I hear an amen? Well, this morning I want to speak to you a message entitled, Faith Ignites a Victory Based on a Simple Faith of Jonathan. So far as we have studied 1 Samuel, we find that uh, we find three predominant characters in 1 Samuel. First is Samuel himself. Second, we find King Saul. And thirdly, we find King David, who is coming in the chapters beyond, uh, three predominant characters. We also find three supporting characters in the book of 1 Samuel. And that is Eli, the priest, uh, Hannah, the mother of uh, Samuel, and third is Jonathan. And this morning, we are going to look a little bit into Jonathan's life and his faith. In 1 Samuel chapter 14, when you start the chapter, Israel is already on the verge of war with the Philistines. 1 Samuel 14, 1. One day, Jonathan, son of Saul, said to his young armor bearer, Come, let's go over to the Philistine outpost on the other side. But he did not tell his father. You see the contrast between Saul and Jonathan? Saul being the king was supposed to do everything that the Lord enabled his hands to do. And Saul did not take up the initiative to go and rout the Philistines from the promised land. And his son is taking the second initiative now to go and fight the Philistines. And he's going with just two people against a very formidable enemy. The Philistines are having 3,000 iron chariots, 6,000 charioteers, foot soldiers like the sand of the sea. They have the latest weapons of iron, but Israel have no iron weapons. If Israel had to go for uh, iron weapons, it all was with the Philistines. When the, when the war cry broke out, the Philistines shut shop and all their iron smiths were called back to their home. So Israel has no weapon. Chapter 13 says that in the whole of Israel, only two people had this word. That was Saul and his son Jonathan. Everyone else is taking the farm equipment. It's a newly formed country. They don't have an army of their own. So they're taking any equipment what they can find and going for the battle. And in this scene, when it comes to 1 Samuel chapter 14, we find that uh, the people of Israel are afraid of Philistines and they have run away and hid in holes and they some have even gone across the Transjordan because they know that they are going to face the defeat. It is in such a scenario that Jonathan says to his armor bearer, come, let's go and fight the Philistine outpost. So now what we see over here is a faith in the part of Jonathan. Just two of them fighting a big army. Chapter 14 and verse 6, Jonathan says to his young armor bearer, come, let's go over to the outpost of those uncircumcised men, those who are not in covenant with the Lord, Perhaps the Lord will act on our behalf. Nothing, look at that verse, nothing can hinder the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few. I like that statement of Jonathan. He says that we are few, but when we go in the name of the Lord, nothing can hinder the Lord. Our resources are few. Our abilities are few. We don't have fighting men. We don't have weapons uh, to fight against them. But we are going knowing that this is the will of God to rout the enemies from the promised land. And we are going in the name of the Lord. And when we go, the Lord will save us. And whether we have many men or whether we have few people. It is a venture of faith that Jonathan is taking. What venture of faith is God asking you to take? Maybe starting a Bible study. Maybe opening your home for, for a house church or a Bible study group. Maybe joining some ministry that God has for you. 
It may be starting a business initiative where you feel can bring solution and blessings to many people's lives. What is that initiative of faith that God has given you and asking you to take? What are those dreams that you have had growing up? And those dreams are just in that piece of paper in your old diary. Why? Because it is laid like that and you have not taken any action on that. This morning, the Lord is reminding us that he wants to do great things in and through our lives, provided we need to take the initiative in faith, trusting in the Lord. Jonathan had at that simple faith. And what is that simple faith? Courage in the Lord. He had the courage in the Lord. What was his courage? Believed that what God did in the past for Israel, God is able to do it even today. Look at the book of Judges. It is all stories of weak people, little resources, not so formidable people, not so resourceful people, but they came against a large enemy by the grace of God. And one of the person is Gideon, right? With 300 people, he fought the Midianites. Jael, who single-handedly defeated Sisera's commander, Javin. And Shamgar, who killed 600 Philistines with an ox god. And the Bible, the history of Israel is filled with people who have done great exploits with little resources. Tell the story about Exodus in the Red Sea, the mighty Pharaoh and the army with no resources from Israel were defeated in the Red Sea because they took a step of faith to walk across the Red Sea. Can I hear an amen church? Amen. So Jonathan knew the history of his people and he said what God did, God can do even today. In 1 Samuel chapter 7, Samuel leads them to a wonderful victory over the Philistines, the same enemy. And then Samuel raised an Ebenezer and he says, this is a testimony. The Lord can give us victory when we are faced with an enemy that is bigger than us. And he raised an Ebenezer and he said, hitherto the Lord has helped us. Look into our own lives, my dear friends. Look back into your lives. How God has blessed you. God has healed us. When we were there in pain. When we were lonely. When there was nobody for us. When we were struggling without a job. God has blessed us. God has proven to be our Ebenezer to help us. And I believe that if God has done that in the past. In each and every one of our lives. God is able to do great things in our life even today. Amen. I can see heroes of trophies of faith sitting over here who has overcome by the blood of Jesus, who has overcome by faith in Jesus Christ. Why are you so overwhelmed with the situation now? God is able to give you a greater victory if you just stand up and take that position by faith. Hallelujah. Probably one of the biggest uh, step of faith that we took, simple step of faith we took was to come into this part of the city. We were praying, Lord, which part of the city we should go and settle down. We had uh, some uh, properties in some other part of the city. And we were praying and seeking the Lord, Lord, what do we do? Where do we settle down? And where do we do something useful for the Lord? And what the world said was a very up -go upbeat community, a place where we had a land at that time, 21 years ago. For the world, it was foolishness. We had a land in HSR layout. It is one of the top places now. But the Lord laid in our heart to sell that and buy a land in HBR layout. Everybody around us said, Shine, you are doing a foolish thing. Who will sell something from HSR and come to HBR layout? But I knew the Lord was asking me to take a step of faith. We built a home and we started reaching out to the neighbors. No resources, no people, no believers, no musicians, no money. We were literally without any resources. But we decided to take a step of faith that God wanted us to take. And I thank God. Our God has, has honored those simple steps of faith that we have taken. And if the Lord has done that in my own life, our life, God is able to do great things in and through every one of your lives amen don't hold back with god you are a majority 
you may be thinking that you have lack resources you lack the talent you lack the education you don't have the money you don't have the recommendation with god this is not a problem god wants your step of faith and trusting in him and he will do great things beyond your imagination even that's the greatness of our god so the simple faith that has courage on the lord that the lord will lead us in this battle as well secondly if you really want to have that simple faith it works one side with god's help and the other side faith is also built up in the community we need each other to build each other's faith and for jonathan it was the encouragement of his armor bearer his armor bearer said look at what his armor bearer said come to first samuel chapter 14 verse 7 His armor bearer, when he said, "Come, let's go to the Philistines," what did he say? Do all that you have in mind. His armor bearer said, "Go ahead. I am with you, heart and soul." We need encouragement from the Lord. At the same time, we need to encouragement from one another. You know, because when you come to church, we get so encouraged by one another and the presence of the Lord. That's the reason we come over here to worship Him. but how wonderful it will be for all of us to have somebody who will walk alongside us and say i believe in you i believe that god is working to you with you and i am standing with you no matter what heart and soul let us do the work together and the world is in need of armor bearers people who encourage us to fulfill god's purposes in our lives your husband can be your armor bearer husbands your wife is waiting for that for that encouragement from you you know that encouragement can if uh, can trust you and give you the drive to fulfill god's purposes we are living in a culture and society where people want to tear each other they want to discourage oh it's not working oh i will come with you but i will come with you only a small way but i cannot come the whole way but that's not what the armor bearer said do what is in your mind i am with you heart and soul our children need to hear that god has a purpose for our children and parents you need to be that armor bearer you be need to be that encourager for your children for your wife for your husband we as pastors we need some armor bearers we need people who will come and stand by us and say pastor we see the work that you are doing we see that the task is enormous we are with you do whatever is in your mind that the lord has laid we are with you heart and soul friends the church the communities families and ministries are built with people standing with one another and encouraging one another i pray that there will be a lot of armor bearers that will rise up at city harvest who will strengthen your families strengthen one another in our fellowship strengthen the ministry as a whole and we will be able to have a great exploit over the territory of the enemy and god will give us souls can i hear an amen church amen let there be armor uh, armor bearers in our families and in our lives so simple faith of jonathan come to us eight So Jonathan said when he saw that armor bearer is encouraging him Jonathan said in verse 8 come on then we will cross over toward them and let them see us if they say to us wait there until we come to you we will stay where we are and not go up up to them but if they say come up to us we will climb up because that will be our sign that the lord has given them into our hands now i want to bring to the map at the time of saul and jonathan and uh, from that map we will just have a brief look at it see that is the place that the triangular place on top micmash is there the triangular place on top that's the place of the battle okay and that is given magnified over here down the dotted arrows are the are the position of jonathan and he and his two people giba uh, jonathan's men are there but now somewhere jonathan is near the philistine outpost just with two people right and on top look at that saul's forces they have moved from migron and they have assembled at micmash somewhere nearby 600 people are with saul saul instead of going and attacking the philistines who are occupying their territory 
he does not do anything and it takes Jonathan to come all the way to come to the Philistine outpost. And look at the map, it is all a hilly area. Remember the Kargil war? It was a very difficult war, fighting on the mountain, the Himalayas, right? And all the other sub-mountains over there, full of snow, and it is very difficult to fight, fight wars, especially uh, warfare uh, in the olden times in the mountain territories. So on the, on the southern side of the mountain, on the one cliff was uh, the, uh, uh, Jonathan and his armor bearer, one cliff on top. But on the northern side was the Philistine outpost. So can you imagine two huge mountains? There are other mountains that are surrounding. And one prominent mountain is Jonathan and his armor bearer. And there is a cliff, there is a valley. And then the next mountain immediately, and you have the Philistine outpost over there. Their mighty weapons, their people are waiting to just ambush the people of Israel. So Jonathan tells to his armor bearer, come, let's go and fight. The armor bearer said, you go, whatever is in your mind. I am standing with you, heart and mind. So Jonathan says, come, let's go. With that context, come to verse 8. Jonathan said, Come on then, we will cross over toward them and let them see us. In other words, we will come out of our hiding from this cliff and we will go to the edge of the cliff so that from the other side, the Philistines can see us, that, that they will know that we are ready for the battle. The next verse, if they say to us, wait there until we come to you, we will stay where we are and not go up to them. But if, we say, if they say, come up to us, we will climb up because that will be our sign that the Lord has given them into our hands. So there are two ways this battle can be won. One is you wait for them to come to your mountain or you descend down to the valley and they descend to the valley and the battle is fought in the valley. Or the third way is you climb, descend down and you climb up the enemy mountain and you go to the enemy territory and fight. So Jonathan said, it is impossible, I know, human condition, it's very dif difficult in my mind. I don't think I will win this battle, but we are ready for the battle. I'm going to take it up. I'm a weak person, I'm not qualified for this position, I'm not qualified for this ministry, but I know that if I'm in that position, God can use me. So Jonathan says, see the imagination in his mind, we are less equipped, but we are going to go anyhow for the ba battle. But if they say to come down to the valley, we will go down and fight the valley. That's the, in the valley. That's the will of God. But if they say to come up to our mountain, we will climb up and go there and fight. Whatever we, they say will be the will of God. Now, let me ask you, which is easy to fight? Climb down the valley and they also come down and fight? Or you climb down your valley and you enter up the enemy uh, mountain and you go up top and fight, which is tough, which is tough, climbing tough is tough, right, and climbing tough is also equivalent to a defeat, have you seen the olden day forts, where are they held, they are on high mountain, and why are they keeping these forts high up in the mountain, so that when the enemy comes, they can spot them, they can push big boulders, and shoot arrows, and weapons on them, so that even before they could come, they are defeated, Jonathan is not taken back. He says that if they call us to go on top, that's a sign that this impossible task, God is asking us to complete it. So what happens? Come to chapter uh, 14, verse 11 onwards. So both of them showed themselves to the Philistine outpost. Look, said the Philistines, the Hebrews are crawling out of the holes they were hiding in. They are mocking them because they were afraid. In the previous chapter, chapter 13, you can see that the Philistine, the Israelites are hiding. There is panic in the Israelite camp. Saul is upset because his people are very less. They have all run to the caves and they are hiding. And there is panic and these people are mocking at them. They are coming out of their caves. They are coming out of their holes. Verse 12. The men of the outpost shouted to Jonathan and his armor bearer, Come up to us and we will teach you a lesson. So Jonathan said to his armor bearer, climb up after me. The Lord has given them into the hand of Israel. I want to stand there and bring out some application over here. First of all, Jonathan said, we are going to climb up. If you want to do something for the Lord, 
it takes effort god does not use lazy people if you are wanting to do great works for the lord you need to wake up you need to do you need to be awake when others are asleep Work hard, burn the midnight oil, call for a fast, put your hands to work and the Lord will bless your work when you work hard for the Lord. Climbing up the mountain was an uphill task. It was not an easy task. And God's work is done through human hands that takes up great exploits for the Lord by trusting him in faith. William Carey, the great missionary to India, he said, expect great things from the Lord, but attempt great things for God. There is human effort involved. God will not just drop your purpose on your lap on a platter. We need to trust in the Lord. We need to have faith in the Lord. And when the opportunity comes, we need to be willing to take that steps by faith and God will honor that. Amen? There are many over here, God is speaking this message this morning. Sleeping giants, wake up. God has a great plan for you. And he will use you powerfully, not based on your resources, but based on the work of God and your plan that God has for you. Ventures of faith require work. Secondly, look at Jonathan's mindset. Verse 12, the last part. Come up, climb up after me. The Lord has given them into the hand of Israel. What does he say? The Lord is going to give and he's already given. Even before you can start, the Lord has given you the victory. Amen. We are not working from defeat to victory. Christ has achieved for us victory on the cross of Calvary. When we take the name of Jesus and move forward, the victory is already ours. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at his perspective. He didn't start the battle, but the, he's saying that the Lord has already given them into the hand of Israel. So Jonathan understands that when he fights, he's fighting for Israel. When he fights, when he takes a step, he's taking a step for God. So he's not doing it for personal name. He's not doing it for personal glory. He's not doing it for personal favor. He is doing it for the kingdom of God. And when he moves, God moves. When he moves, Israel takes the victory. And that was his perspective. Amazing perspective for ministry. For many people, ministry has become self-glory, self-name, and everything is about one man. Friends, that's not the ministry. Whoever does, whoever sows, or whoever waters, or whoever plows the field, it is God who gives the growth, and we are all people in the kingdom of God working for the Lord. And that was Jonathan's mindset. Self-away. Israel ahead and God even ahead of him. That was his motive. No wonder why God gave him the victory in the, in the verses to come. Verse 13. Jonathan climbed up using his hands and feet. Look at the effort that is put in. With his armor bearer right behind him. One hand sword. Right? That's all the weapon he has. And with one hand he has to catch on to some roots from the mountain. And just progress on top. Not knowing who is hiding behind the bush. Who is going to kill him but he's trusting in the Lord. But when he kept his step in faith. Look at verse 13 the next part. The Philistines fell before Jonathan. We don't know what happened but the Lord caused a confusion. And it was as if as Jonathan was hanging with one hand and putting his leg on the upper plateau or upper place on a rock. And his hand, one hand had the sword. The Philistines would just tremble or, or slip their foot and they would just come and fall in front of Jonathan. How did it happen? We don't know. But the Lord did that. You saw what God did? When we take steps for the Lord, supernaturally, the Lord will move ahead of us. And what we think is impossible, God will slowly and slowly give us the victory step by step. But if we are up there in that mountain like old where Jonathan was, nothing is going to happen, my dear friends. Okay, look at that verse. The Philistines fell before Jonathan and his armor bearer followed and killed behind him. Verse 14. 
In the first attack, Jonathan and his armor bearer killed some 20 men in the area, about half an acre. Then the Lord started moving powerfully. Look at verse 15. Then panic struck the whole army, Philistine army, those in the camp and field, and those in the outposts and raiding parties. In the previous chapter, maybe a couple of days ago, the panic was where? In the Israelite camp, right? They were afraid of what is about to happen to them. But just uh, initiative of Jonathan, a little bit of initiative of Jonathan, the panic just transferred from the Israelite camp to the opposite camp. Are you come here with a lot of confusion? Have you come here with a lot of panic, not knowing what to do, very confused, crossroad? If you start taking steps in faith in the presence of God, God just gives you that release out of that. You see, it's a very Christian principle. Start moving forward where God has called you and you will see that burden, that weight lifted up and God's ways just opening up in front of your eyes, friends. Amen. I believe this message is for somebody here. God also did something else. Look at verse 15, the next part. And the ground shook. God works when you start working little, my dear friends. He starts working with the nature. He starts working with the enemies. He starts working around the, with the people around you. It just, God is just waiting for you to take that first baby step. Amen. There are many people with a call of ministry. God called you ministries not only on the church, maybe in the secular office. Whatever the Lord has laid in your heart is your calling to do for the Lord. And God is waiting for you to take that steps of faith so that he can start working and showing his favor towards you. We saw the faith of Jonathan and we saw the encouragement of the armor bearer. But on the contrast, go home and read. You can also find Saul and why Saul failed over here. When Saul comes to know, when his friends are coming and telling him, his advisors are telling him, Saul, there's something wrong with the Philistines looks like. They're all in panic. And we heard the sound of a huge earthquake and maybe a landslide. And those formidable Philistines, they are in panic. So what, did, what should Saul do as a king? Seize the moment. Go for the kill. Right? Now, friends, those who are listening to me for the first time, the, in, this is the Old Testament times of kings and wars. And, and that's how the culture was then. In the New Testament, the warfare is different. Okay, We don't fight with our, uh, with our uh, hands. The warfare, we fight on our knees. We take the, the uh, armor of God and we stand still. The Lord fights our battles. And we don't fight with human people. We don't fight with people. We fight with principalities and powers of darkness. But this is an Old Testament time and we are taking this passage just to bring in some life application for us now. Okay? So what happens? What should have Saul, what Saul should have done? When he saw that this is an enemy, this is a formidable enemy, they are threatening Israel. Israel is running into the caves and he is the king over there. And Samuel has told him already in chapter 10, do what your hands finds to do. What should Saul do? Come on, tell me, answer me. What should Saul do? He should seize the initiative and go for the kill. You know what Saul did? He called for an investigation. Why this has happened? Go and read that. He finds out who is not with us so that they have gone and created this havoc in the Philistine camp. And finally, he finds that two people are not there. One is his son and one is the armor bearer. He's a little calmed down because he knew that his dynasty is not going to be there. But he's a little calm. Why? Because nobody else is taking the credit. His son is taking the credit. Right? Some people are like that. If the credit goes to somebody else, they don't like it. But as long as their children take the credit, they're very happy. Saul. Saul's spirit, that is. Right? Okay. I hope you are getting what I'm telling you. And this happens in the church realm. Now, coming forward. So, now, instead of Saul is delaying the process of victory, he says, if find out, first of all, an investigation has started instead of Israel going and fighting. Secondly, he says, call for a fast. Nobody will eat. Man, this man is going after rituals instead of seizing the movement. Moment. He's telling, let's call for a fast. 
nobody will eat actually the forces are ready to fight for fighting forces you need to fast or you need to feast do you need to fast or eat you need to eat you need some glucose man you need to run around the mountains and climb and fight the army and he is kind of see when you are blinded you make big blunders as even as a leader when you have lost the call of god when you have lost it what you think is right may be the foolish thing to do that should not happen with christian leaders including me right he was telling let's let's fast is fasting good yes let's inquire of the lord he calls for the ephod now ephod is a priestly garment worn by the high priest and then they have a rectangular piece outside it and let me tell you that it has got three stones umum and thurims right and out of that that was a way for them to know the will of god one stone would glow and one stone is is a black and white stone and with that they would know the will of god not for us it's for their times okay and if you want to know in detail the script is there and the detail my understanding is there in the script online you can go and read about uh, efo then all how they found out the will of god with the stones right but what is saul doing now saul is trying to investigate saul is trying to fast straw is trying to find the will of god is it the time for doing that no because already samuel has said when you are in a position where god opens a door do what your hand finds to do god will give you the victory over there when god opens an opportunity there is no time to waste we get to action very fast many 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 people have wasted a lot of opportunities because they have so called rituals pastor let me pray about it they will start praying six months one year and they will not do anything man this is the answer for all your prayers and desires for the last 5 years and now is the opportune time step out in faith and that's not Saul that is Jonathan he will take the opportunities and he will step out in faith so what happens what is the result of this of this uh, battle in first samuel 14 verse 23 the result of the battle on that day the lord saved israel and the battle moved on beyond beth aven praise god for the simple faith of jonathan god gave israel the victory with just two people i just want you to i uh, to conclude this morning this afternoon i want to bring to some application points this morning amen what is it I like that verse what Jonathan said nothing can hinder the lord from saving just turn to the person sitting next to you and say nothing can hinder the lord from saving amen and turn to the next person and say whether by many or by few just say that just say that amen dear friends God is not worried about what resource you have or don't have what situation you are in this morning God wants you to start taking up opportunities maybe in your work in your business in your ministry in your talent to work for the kingdom of God and God is waiting for you to take some effort come out of that comfort zone and and God will use you powerfully for God's glory act on the promises of God not on fear let's keep in step with the promises of god and god will lead us supernaturally and the time of faith for us i can clearly say was to come into this auditorium when we were worshiping in the previous place that was a land and a building totally gifted to us and the condition was that as long as i'm the pastor of city harvest that land is for me and for the church free no rent so we had around one english service and tamil service happening over there and uh, hindi service also happening and one or two some very less people after we got that place just across the uh, road uh, the landlord said now you have to vacate the same person who brought us inside said shine you have to vacate we we are not giving you right and there's a big story on how they they got we got that land we built that that church and everything right 
where that SBI bank stands, that was a place church was there and that was given to us. But I felt that it's not point in fighting that battle over there. I thought I should fight my battle on the knees and the Lord is moving me to take a step of faith. I did not know. I told him, finally, three months, give me three months, we will vacate the place. We don't know where to take the people. I don't know anybody over here, no money, no resources. I remember that day, there, 10 years ago, there was no much traffic in this road like now. One early morning, I used to go around and look for places because I used to go, to, I used to go for work 10, uh, 12 years ago. And I remember standing right in that middle of that road in the front of the petrol pump, early morning, 5.30, no traffic, lifting my hands and crying to the Lord, where do I take your people? Where do I take your people? Guide me, Lord. We want to take a step of faith. We have no resources. And the Lord brought us to this place. And it was just a condemned factory that time. And all our people put together, we did not have people to sit even one-fourth of this auditorium. Heavy rent. A lot of advance to be given. Renovations to be done. But I thank God that God enabled us to take that step of faith because God has honored that with the growth in the kingdom of God. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm telling you these experiences so that you will take steps of faith in your own life in the calling that God has given to you, my dear friends. There are giants. There are great people of God sitting right in our midst with great calling. But God is waiting for you. Start that prayer. Do some initiative. Start a Bible study. Start a worship ministry. Amen. Go out for a mission trip. You don't know the possibilities that God is about to open for you. Don't limit yourself just the way where you are. God has greater dreams for you. And start stepping out in the name of Jesus. And you will see that in the name of Jesus Christ.